Hey, what's up DIYers? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We are back working on our boat today. And in today's video, the step-by-step -step process on how to properly and safely replace the winch and strap. Now you might be replacing it on a jet ski trailer, same concept and steps. Let's get started. All right, DIYers at the workstation now. You can see on the other side of the jet ski is the workbench. We'll get to that here shortly. And in-house for DIY repair videos is my mom and dad's 2003 Sea-Doo GTX. And no joke, it has no engine inside the hull. We just pulled that out a few days ago. And down below in the comment section and description section, we will have a link on step one or part one removing an engine. It's a 951 DI. In addition, we've got a jet ski stand. Now that is not the jet ski we are going to put on the stand. We've got a 95 XP. I'll show you that real quick. And DORs, here we are in the garage, and in front of us now is my wife's 1995 Sea-Doo XP. She loves it, I love it, and we are going to transition this jet ski from this trailer onto that stand and perform several helpful DIY videos for all of you, again, the DIY community. And down below in the comment section will be a link on the video showing us transitioning this jet ski, again, 95 XP, off this trailer and onto that stand. Definitely check that out. Here we are making our way to the front starboard portion of the jet ski and check this out. Decals and everything about the jet ski, surprisingly. We are very lucky, in very good condition when we picked it up and purchased it. And it even has the original XP Sea-Doo sticker with the Dolphin. And they do not do that anymore. In addition, down below will be a link to a video showing us using a stencil kit and spraying the word Sea-Doo on this seat like it does when it comes from the manufacturer. And we have a purple seat. We also have a yellow seat. We are going to have an additional link down below showing how to reupholster a seat. Basically remove the old worn out vinyl cover and install a brand new one. Back to the workstation. And this little stand is going to be perfect for that 95 XP. And we will also post a link down below on how to assemble that. We are also going to have a link on how we shift the jet ski off the trailer and onto that stand. However, let's hop to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski, and if you're into skateboarding, definitely check out the links down below as well. And to the workbench, we are always busy here. We've got several parts still here on the workbench that came off the engine of the jet ski. However, here is our pulling winch that we are going to install on our boat trailer, as well as the brand new two inch by 20 foot 4,000 pound brake, strap, and hook. And down below in the comment section and description section, we will have links on where to purchase these. However, coming up top, I do want to show you the top portion and part numbers, as well as the 1,800 pound, 817 kilogram. And here's some additional info. Let's go and open it. And here it is with the box opened up and how it looks when it's positioned inside the box. You got the lever, you got the winch, you got instructions, and I'm sure there's a little bag of hardware in there as well. Here it is unpackaged and out of the box. There's the crank or lever. And coming in, we've got a five-year warranty, little tag. And there's some additional info. And brand new. Look at that. And the lock mechanism or forward and reverse is brand new. Look at that. And the one that's installed on our boat trailer right now, well, it is completely seized. The spring is broken. And this will be very nice having this brand new one installed. There's our bag of hardware. Let's go out to the boat and get started. All right, DIYers, we are in the garage and to our boat trailer, and here it is, our 30-year-old plus winch and strap. And as you can see, rusted, bad shape, just begging for replacement. There's the crank or lever. And take a look at the strap. You can tell the strap itself is beginning to fray, and it's only a matter of time before that snaps. Time to get that replaced. And check out what's inside for the winner, the DIY Raptor. In addition, down below in the comments and description is a link on how to replace your boat trailer or jet ski trailer coupler. In our case, we got a brand new two inch ball coupler and it is a three inch channel. 
again definitely check out that why not have a brand new coupler along with your brand new winch and strap now to our table and a few items we have grabbed we have grabbed the 9 16th wrench a utility knife and down below in the comments and description will be a link on where to purchase impact gun or wrench specific sockets this is an entire kit they are thicker they are stronger and again specifically designed for a tool like this and i've got an adapter on there as well in our case that is a 14 millimeter and we will get to loosening up the bolts here shortly however again there's the brand new winch and additional parts there's the hardware unpackaged coming back to the winch and the very first thing i'm going to do is reference the measure tape on the portion of the trailer as shown here and as you can see, I am just above six. So if I go below six, I can count three lines. And this portion right here is hard mounted and will be stationary. However, your trailer may be different. However, in our case, this portion of the trailer or adapter, it may shift when we loosen up the bolts that secure the winch to the frame. And I need to properly mark that exact measurement. And I did just that. All I did was use maybe a two inch piece of red electrical tape again to mark my measurement. It's worked for 30 plus years. Why not keep the same measurement? Taking a step back to a different camera angle and to the locking lever that allows us to crank the winch forward and reverse or in and out. And in our case right now, it is in the up and lock position and I'm just going to push it and lower it down. And from here, I can carefully begin turning the winch counterclockwise. And basically all I wanna do is release the tension on the strap itself and then remove the hook from the boat hook itself. And unfortunately, DIYers, mine is so old, rusted, and seized, I'm going to tap this portion with a rubber mallet carefully so I can break the inner latch from the winch wheel itself. And as you just saw right there, you can definitely see why we are replacing our winch. And in that case, I'm going to come up top and again, counterclockwise, give myself a lot of slack on the strap itself. Come up here and loosen it. It is now removed. I'm going to carefully feed the hook portion. As you see right here, even this is completely seized and rusted and no longer spring loads back to the closed and locked position. This whole thing 30 plus years old, it doesn't owe us anything, but it needs to be replaced. I'm going to carefully set that down. And from here, we'll go underneath the frame and remove the bolts that secure the winch to the frame. However, before we go down below, you can see there is a bolt, again, 916, and the other one is right inside there. And we will simultaneously use our 916 wrench on the top bolt head here on both bolts as we use the impact gun or wrench down below to loosen them and remove the nuts. And coming port side of the winch and down below, there is a securing plate that basically is not part of the frame itself. And again, this whole section right here, it may shift or slide when we loosen up and remove those nuts and bolts. We are now looking at the back or inner portion of the frame where we have again that securing plate and the 14 millimeter nuts and bolts. And I am now going to transition to my Craftsman impact gun with the adapter and 14 millimeter impact specific rated and strong socket. With the nuts now loosened up, I am now going to position my wrench on the bolt head up top and use a 14 millimeter socket and ratchet to remove those nuts. There it is. I'm actually going to leave the bolt inside the housing and plate. Now to the top knot, I'm going to use that wrench and feed all the way inside here. And same thing, 14 millimeter socket and ratchet. And 
And as I loosen this, I can tell this part right here is getting very loose and it's going to start moving. And there it is, it slid all the way down. It's still secured to the chain here and I'll continue loosening and removing that nut. And there's the plate. In DIYers, we need to keep this. From here, I'm going to raise the camera and shift it over. And I'm going to carefully pull the winch out of the frame. And there it is. Coming up top to a front view of the frame and mount. And again, this entire piece is now loose, as you see right there. And we are going to carefully clean everything and then rest the brand new winch in place and secure it with the bolts. With the brand new winch in hand, I do want to point out that our old winch had the bolt inserted and secured in the bottom hole. As you can see here, we've got two. And then up top, you've got a large oval cutout for the top bolt. And when securing the winch to the trailer, I want the geared portion of the winch starboard side. Align your bolts, feed it through the frame, and hold on to it. Do not allow your winch to fall. Push the bolts all the way flush. And from here, we'll go on the inner side and secure the plate with the nuts. As I bring the plate in, I'm also going to hold the winch and just to ensure it does not fall. Grab the winch on the opposite side and push the bolts flush again. And I'm actually going to grab something that will hold this winch in place. And it may be as simple as just my rubber mallet, just to hold that top portion that's trying to sneak out in place. Coming up with the plate, and again, align your holes. And the bolts are through, and again, I'm just going to carefully, without cross-threading them, secure the nuts. Now, DIYers, I did take a wire brush. However, in our case, we used a brass brush just to clean up the thread of the bolts. And down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, will be a link on where to purchase a brush kit to, again, clean your threads. And just hand tighten it for now. Come up to the top bolt, push the bolt head flush, and secure the nut. And back to the wrench on the bolt head and 14 millimeter socket. And we are not going to tighten this all the way. We are going to get it just to a point where it has tension. And then we are going to shift the inner movable brace upward back to our proper measurements. Make a progress DLRs. I have removed the rubber mallet that was only holding just a tiny bit of weight, but just enough to not allow the winch to fall forward. And again, from here, we need to shift this entire movable brace upward to our proper measurements. And there is our red tape. Again, I'm just going to carefully position the mount here in line with where we have our tape and go down below and secure those nuts. At this point, I've got the top nut and bolt tightened to a point where this entire brace is not going to fall. And from here, I'm going to go down below and tighten the bottom bolt and nut. And DIYers, what I recommend doing next is just come up top and verify your measurements prior to securing your nuts and bolts all the way. And all looks good in our case, we will secure both the bottom and upper bolt and nut. Now to a close-up view of inside, as you see, plate and nuts and bolts are secured. Coming up top to the winch, and again, our measurements are back in line as they were before. 
All right, DIYers, we are back port side. We are going to direct our attention to this large threaded stud sticking out port side of the lower portion of the winch, and it is now time to install our crank or lever. And take note of the oval shape here and design of the crank or lever itself. And I'm going to position the lever onto the threaded stud. And the threaded stud also has a machine cut or flat spot on it. So you can only install this lever or crank one way. And again, align it properly and carefully slide it all the way on and flush with the back stopping point. I will lower it down. And ours has a 15 16 nut, and it also has basically thread locker already installed inside it. We are going to align the thread without cross threading it and tighten it only. And there it is. Transition to the 15 16 socket and tighten it in place. And DIYers, do not over tighten this. In most cases, your instructions will give the foot pounds to be applied to this nut. However, unfortunately, our instructions do not mention it. But if yours do, I highly recommend applying no more than the foot pound torque in your instruction manual. And it won't be much, it might only be about 10 to 15 foot pounds. Again, do not over tighten it. We've got about a quarter inch of the threaded stud sticking out. And you can tell we are in the unwind position with the crank lever down here. And check that out. It is now time to install the strap. Back to the strap and again there is the information. Same brand as our winch. And the cool thing is it came with hardware in it. So we don't actually have to use the old hardware. With the strap unwrapped I want to direct our attention to the little instructions that came inside the hardware bag. We've got two different size bolts and one uniquely shaped lock nut. And very important, read the directions because the bolt itself has to be positioned and slid through the winch in a way where the nut is on the gear side as shown here. And in our case, we did a dry run and the smaller of the two bolts is what fits our exact winch. At this point I want to direct our attention to the strap and you see on the opposite end of the loop portion or end of the strap you have where the two meet or basically the strap is folded over and sewn. This is going to be on the bottom portion as it secures itself in the winch and is wound in place. And what I'm going to do again with the folded over portion I'm going to cup up and through this little opening here onto the roller and I have already unwrapped the entire strap and I'm going to position it just right inside here as shown there and give myself a little more slack so it does not pull the entire strap through. Back port side and before I unwrap the entire strap I also came port side and counterclockwise turn the winch until the oval shaped machine cutout is accessible and I'm going to carefully insert the smaller of the two bolts and as I insert the bolt I'm also going to push the bolt through the loop portion as shown here and all the way through to the opposite gear portion of the winch and through the large oval shaped cutout. And as you push the bolt through, do not pinch the strap. Once the bolt's through, grab the uniquely shaped 916 nut and hand tighten it. After that, without over tightening it, grab your 916 ratchet and socket, as well as the wrench, and tighten it in place. And DIYers do not over tighten that bolt and nut because the last thing you want to do is actually damage or compress the two sides of the winch, ultimately not allowing your strap to be wound in or unwound freely. However, you definitely do not want the bolt and nut loose. In addition, I have pushed the bolt and nut all the way flush with the inner portion of the hole or cutout. And I'll tighten it just a little bit more. After that, I'm going to shift the lever to the wind position, and it is now time to wind this strap into the winch. And as you do this, apply constant pressure to the winch up top at the roller. And DIYers, this takes about three to five minutes because it's a 20 foot strap and it's loud. As 
you see, ours locks in place. Again, our old winch was in terrible rusted condition and just wouldn't work properly. And now coming starboard side, if you install your strap properly, the folded over and sewed end with the little additional information portion here should be on the bottom and not sticking up like this. And from here, again, I'll continue cranking and secure this portion. Look at that. Remember our old one. Basically, if I pushed it open, it stayed open. And if I pushed it closed, it was hard to open. Much better. And I'm going to come through here and to starboard side and secure it on the hook of the boat. Back port side and grab the strap to give it that additional tension and continue winding it in. And at the very end, once the actual hook is right flush with the top mount or bally, you can give it a couple more turns because what it will do when you do that is tighten up the inner strap and get rid of any loose portions while you are winding it in place. Back starboard side, and again, there's that nut on the gear side of the winch. Very, very important. And the strap itself is pretty firm. Now, in the event that you notice more of an oval shape to the strap on the winch, that will go away over time when you launch the boat, as well as put it back on the trailer and winch this strap tight. That oval shape in the strap will go away and become a perfect circle. And again, up top, as shown right here, the folded over position or portion of the strap is on the bottom side, making the presentation finish of the strap much better and presentable. Coming back starboard side, and the very last thing I'm going to do is remove that tape. And that is it, DIYers. We hope this helped. Do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And DIYers, one last thing before we wrap the video up. I do want to show you how to operate this little wind and unwind mechanism. And right now, again, we are in the up position or configuration and winding the winch tight. However, when it's time to launch the boat and you want to reconfigure this lever to the unwind and down position, keep your hands away from the gear. And right now, if you push on it, it won't go down. So carefully grab your lever or crank and apply just a little bit of clockwise pressure until it shifts the lever and you can then push it down as shown there. And then you can unwind your strap and launch your boat. However, we're not going to do that at this point. <laughs>